Okay, welcome back to the second part of Gross Domestic Product. And in this podcast, we're looking at how we actually measure GDP. So remember in the last podcast, we looked at what is gross, how do we measure the size of an, econo- of an economy? And the measure we use or statistic that we use is gross domestic product, GDP. But how do we measure it? So to do, work that out, we've got to take make, create a simple model of the economy. And economists create what's called the circular flow. In the circular flow, the basic circular flow, we have two sectors, households and producers. So everyone is either a household or and or a producer. And going between these two sectors are a number of exchanges. So for instance, households spend the money they earn on goods and services. So their spending is one of the flows going between the two sectors. Now in exchange for expenditure, firms pay households income. So they pay the household's income, which the households then spend with the producers. Now those are the money flows, and those money flows are going on all time through the year. In exchange for those money flows, we have two real flows. So in exchange for income, which producers pay to households, households provide goods resources rather to producers, which they use to produce goods and services. Now, goods and services are provided by producers to households in exchange for consumer spending. So we've got four flows, two money, two real, expenditure and income, goods and services and resources. And we're going to use those two money flows this year to calculate how we GDP in New Zealand. So let's look at those two approaches, the expenditure approach and the income approach. Well, first of all, the expenditure approach. To calculate the expenditure approach, we actually break it into five parts. We have consumer spending, goods like cell phones and magazines and going to the movies, stuff that we use for our own personal use. There's government spending, so things like education, healthcare, um, and all the other goods and services that the government provides for us. We have investment, that's when firms buy capital goods to produce those goods and services that consumers buy. So things like factories and computers and trucks, tractors and all those kind of things that firms buy. Next we have exports. Now exports are all the goods and services that we produce in New Zealand but then we sell offshore overseas to other foreign clients. Now in one sense you could say that's it, that's all the expenditure that happens inside New Zealand. But the trouble is when you actually add that up, C plus G plus I plus X, what you'll find is some of the goods and services that we've bought were actually produced overseas. And you remember, GDP does not include the value of goods and services produced overseas. So the one last thing we've got to do when we calculate the expenditure approach is take away imports. So the expenditure approach, it's C plus consumer consumer spending plus government spending plus investment plus exports minus imports. Now if you look in your notes, you'll also see that there's also one other thing called the value of physical increase in stock. And that's just the investment done by firms, the production of goods and services that they don't sell in one year. And that's shown as triangle R or delta R. Now the income approach is when we add up all the income that people earn. So we take all the earnings by employees, compensation of employees, that's wages and salaries. We add the profit made by firms, operating surplus. And then we just have to do a couple of adjustments. We have to add back indirect taxes and take away subsidies. So we get an accurate picture of the actual income that people have earned either working for someone else or running their own business. So those are the two approaches, the expenditure approach and the income approach. 